You're watching, old mates. Backyard Tech. All right. Now, as you can see in the background, it's pro audio time here at Old Mates Backyard Tech combined with a Q&A and advice video. Now, as I've always said, the vast majority of our audio stuff and video or whatever you want to call it will be done on a Friday. However, if someone needs help urgently, I'm happy to bust out a pro audio video or a home AV video any time of the week. Well, for a Monday, that's exactly what's about to happen. One of my viewers has downloaded Harrison Consoles Mixbus 32C-7, but he's having a little bit of an export issue. Apparently he goes to export it and nothing happens. I've had that happen and I can explain exactly why it can happen. Mixing Consoles. DAWs. Monitor and reference speakers. Effects and dynamics. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, it's pro audio time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. I know it's a Monday and as you can see in the background, it's pro audio time. And as I've always said, you know, we try to hang on to our pro audio and home AV and car radio, so on and so forth videos until AV Fridays. But if someone needs some help with any of those topics, I'm happy to get out a video any time of the week. This is just, this is such just one, this is such a case or such one case. You guys know what I'm trying to, I need to wake up really, don't I? Coffee time. I shouldn't laugh because this viewer really needs some help. This is from a viewer by the name of James. Uh, Hi, Almost Backyard Tech. I recently downloaded Harrison Consoles Mixbus 32C-7 after watching your video on it. You're right. It is a great piece of software. However, I have a problem. When I go to export a mix down, it exports twice and I'm unable to play either of the exports. Have you had this trouble? If so, what have you done? Or is there something wrong with the way I have it configured? From James. Um, yes, I have had it done and it was my own fault. <laughs> it was my own stuff up. You know, I'm only human. I make mistakes. Not all experts never make mistakes, but I do. Um, okay. Did he... <laughs> Does he say what he's trying to export it to? No, he doesn't. Oh, hang on. There's more down the bottom. I didn't read it. Um, P.S. I'm trying to export to both BWAV 24-bit and CD Redbook. BWAV 24-bit and CD Redbook. Um, okay, I normally just export to Redbook. Okay. Uh, I work a lot in 44.1 16-bit aka cd quality basically um yes i have had a double export and i've been able to open neither of them okay um let me bring up uh, mixbus 32 c-7 and i'll explain what can happen all right now i can't play you what i'm working on here because i'm trying to sample out a specific bit of what you can see there in the waveform. All right, so I can't play it. But with the export, now I've been clobbered for this and I, I won't publish the comments, but I've been clobbered a few times because I've said that I export at 44.116 bit. All right, I work in 44.116 bit, AKA stereo. Part of the reason behind that is it's a force of habit for me. Um, when I used to just do a straight up real time record of a demo where the only thing I'd done was pan the channels. So there's no EQ, no dynamics, just, it was literally a clean two track record. And when I say clean, I mean, nothing being done to it. It was the raw two track output to a, um, HHB burner. Now don't ask me about HHB because everyone knows them. And every time I talk about 
this sort of stuff, at least two or three of the know-it-all experts rip on me for talking about stuff they know. HHB, very famous pro audio brand, all right? I would record that out at 44.116 bit because it was basically a, 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 a raw two-track output, okay? With Mixbus, and I've, I've done this myself in 7, 6, and 5, all right, so I've done it in all three by mistake. So I know what this view is on about because it can happen. So what happens is you go down to export, all right, and you're going to go and export to audio files. Now, we know just for clarity, I haven't actually shown this, but I'll just quickly do it while we're in here. You can also do a stem or a video export. We're not going to worry about stems at the moment, all right? We're just worrying about straight up two-track out. What happens is, is if you accidentally hit that one as well, another audio format. Now, you can see here I'm set like this. Some people will do a B-Wave 24-bit. Some will do a floating. I just tend to do this one. I know that's not what you're supposed to do, all right? I get it. But I work in that scenario. I work in 44.116 bit. I always have. Okay. Most engineers, at least recording engineers, right? Those of us who sit there and physically record the music. If you're working in an analog um, scenario, you're working in analog. You know, there's no such thing as uh, an analog mixer able to tell the difference between 44.1 and 16 bit and 44.124 bit or 44.132 bit float. It goes without saying, doesn't it? Anyway, James, what can happen is if you accidentally click that, right, it'll, it'll, it will, you won't be able to play it because you've configured it wrongly. Try to avoid hitting that, all right? <coughs> you can actually do it. But if you accidentally have it exactly the same, right, you got to add another format, you see? So just avoid, if we go back to here, when you go down to your export and you go to export this, just avoid clicking add another format. All right, I've done it. I admit, I've accidentally, you know, I've been in here setting everything up. I've done that, not noticing. I've gone to export, nothing's export. Well, it's exported, can't play it. Can't play it in Winamp, can't play it in VLC, can't bring it into Cubase, can't even, you know, whatever. It just doesn't play. So just be careful with that at another format. Now, if you do it in stems, it's the same thing. So just be aware. Avoid accidentally clicking on that. I've done it myself and it, it, I've gone to export the file and it hasn't worked. All right. Neither of the two file names have worked correctly. All right. So that's that that can be what happens. If you double click that format, add another format, it can go all belly up on you. And you end up, you know, in that terrible SH1T creek without a paddle. You know, you sort of your music ends up a beer short of a six pack or, a, you know, a roo short in the top paddock type scenario. Um, so that's I've done. Look, I admit I've done that in five, six and seven. Okay, where I've, I've just accidentally hit that other, add another format, not noticed it, configured it, gone to export it, and it just hasn't worked. So hopefully that sorts your problem out. If you've got any other problems, James, or it's, a, or, or it's not doing that and it still won't export, all right, now that, sometimes it won't export properly. You know, I, I know sysadmins and, and the know-it-all experts say that software's infallible and it's normally a peb cake it's not always that they they would like people would like to believe you know know it all experts and 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 those type of people believe that software is never a problem software doesn't make a mistake you make a mistake that's not always true that's like saying you know um uh, um a computer's you know, never stuffs up. Computers are infallible. You know, 
sometimes, yes, it, it can be peb cake. Sometimes it can be gigo. But it's not always your fault. So if the problem is that you've doubled up your output, it's going to get a little bit wishy-washy. And yes, you are going to end up SH1T Creek without a paddle. Or your mix could be, you know, a roo short in the top paddock or a beer short of a six-pack. And then you're, you know, you're in the dead set fed income department pulling your hair out going, what in the hell's gone wrong? So just make sure you don't hit that other format. All right. If you've got any other problems, James, don't hesitate to either comment or get back in touch with email. I use all three Harrison consoles, Mixbus 32Cs. I swear by them. Um, and I've become pretty good with them because I use them all the time. So... Um, I'm working on the assumption it's in Windows. Um, they didn't say, I don't think, I don't think it was, there was no mention of anything else, was there? No. So I'm, I'm working on the assumption that it'll be in Windows. If it's not and it's in Linux, let me know and I'll sort something out with a Linux variant. Although... It's exactly the same, right? Um, whether you're talking Linux or Windows, Mac OS, whatever. I don't believe it works in Unix, which is probably a good thing. There we go. Bit of help there for a viewer pro audio time. That's it. That uh, I, I give up talking today, guys. That is it for Mondays here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. I am not here tomorrow. I've got some stuff I've got to do tomorrow, so... For Wednesday, little hint, Tech News Today returns um, along with a friend of mine from New South Wales, Morning Boy O, um, has told me about the fact that one of my favorite Linux operating systems has just released its latest, I think it's RC1. Um, and suggested I have a bit of a sticky beak at it. And so we'll probably have a look at that on Wednesday as well. But uh, Tuesday's return to normal here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It'll be a nothing Tuesday, so I'm not here. So I'll catch you around for uh, midweek Wednesday. Try and get through today. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.